I have Tiff Treats cookies for y'all. She's out. See what you got? What it got if you would have came? Tiff Treats. We got it's a, it's a mixture. Oh, it's a mixture. Surprise, mystery surprise. Treats celebrate. Our scripture tonight comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Amen. Father God, again, we acknowledge who you are. You are God, Jehovah, almighty God, the maker and creator of this world and everything in it. There is none like you or ever will be. We thank you this evening for who you are, for your mercy, for your grace, for your kindness, for your love. Thank you for keeping us safe throughout this day, Lord God. And we thank you for providing for us all of our needs this day, Lord God. We do acknowledge that we're not worthy of your mercy and grace. But we thank you, God, for showing it and giving it to us. Thank you for still claiming us as members of your family, Lord God. And we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who loved us so much that he came down from heaven, took on flesh, and lived among us, and showed us how to live life. Jesus showed us not to complicate life, but life is real simple. Just love others like we love ourselves, and just show love. Jesus didn't complicate it with rituals, with clothes to wear, food to eat, things to drink. He just wants us to be loving. So help us in those areas, Lord God. Now we lift up the Bible study tonight and bless Pastor Haynes and bless the lesson tonight. We pray that we all will learn something new and fresh from your word that will help us to be better Christians, Lord God. And now we lift up our, our worship service on Sunday, Lord God, praying for extraordinary service. Bless the guest uh, minister who will preach your word coming to us, Lord God, and uh, grant him clarity and use him in a mighty way, Lord God. And then we ask your blessings upon all uh, Pastor Haynes, associate ministers, the choir members, the musicians, the ushers, the deacons on Sunday, Lord God. And keep us safe, Lord God, in the sanctuary and here in the fellowship hall during Sunday school hour, Lord God. We're not selfish tonight. We lift up every church that is open in your name tonight. Bless every man and woman who are here called to preach your gospel, to pastor. Bless your missionaries. Bless your evangelists, all who declare your word, Lord God. And then, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would touch those who are not saved. Help them to see that they need Jesus in their lives. Whatever they're searching for, Lord God, they will never find it until they accept you, Lord God. And you will open their eyes and you will bless them and you will show them how they can have a rich, loving, enjoyable life here on earth. And then after death, we will live with you forever. We got some children that are sick tonight, Lord God, and we lift them up. We're not going to try to call names, but you know them all. You know where their conditions, you know room numbers. Lord, we ask them for a touch from you. Grant them healing and grant them comfort, Lord God. Bless your doctors, your nurses, your medicines, your caretakers tonight. And then for your children who are bereaved of loved ones, Lord, comfort them as they go through this dark period in their lives, Lord God. So we love you, and we just thank you for all you've done for us. Continue to keep your hands on us and guide us and teach us, Lord God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for allowing us to assemble, dear Heavenly Father, for we know 
that your grace and mercy rest with us and in peace and love and love this evening, God. For without you, we could not even start it today. We just thank you for what you continue to do in our lives each and every day. Heavenly Father, we want you to help us to get closer to you, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Through your word, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. just through life experience, Heavenly Father. But we know that you are the one true God, Heavenly Father. We look to you for guidance, clarity, understanding, and pray these and all the blessings you bestow on us. And I have another thing, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, we just want to say thank you once again for giving us the opportunity to see another day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, my Heavenly Father. You keep giving it to us even though we're not worthy of it. We thank you for putting a hedge of protection around us today, my Heavenly yes. Father, so that we could come into your house of worship today. We thank you for just being on the throne and still in control of this world, my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son to Calvary for us, my Heavenly Father, because you didn't have to do it, but you thought enough of us to do it, my Heavenly Father, and we just thank you. We thank you for just being who you are and still being God of all gods, my Heavenly Father. Yes. We thank you for Bethany, my Heavenly Father. And as we get ready to celebrate the men of Bethany on Sunday, my Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the men of Bethany, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for that foundation, my Heavenly Father, because we know it starts with the men. It starts with the head, my Heavenly Father. And if we need to, to for us to go a certain way, my Heavenly Father, we need that foundation to guide us, my Heavenly Father. And we just thank you right now. We know that you're going to do something extraordinary, my Heavenly Father, with ordinary people, my Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for it. We thank you for what you're doing for Bethany, my Heavenly Father. You're changing us to be the church that you want us to be, my Heavenly Father. We just ask you tonight, my Heavenly Father, let there be something said, my Heavenly Father, to help us with our foundation. Fill our minds up, my Heavenly Father. Fill our hearts with the words, my Heavenly Father, so that we can use them in our daily life, my Heavenly Father. So when people see us, my Heavenly Father, they see you. We don't even have to say anything. They can see the glow on us, my Heavenly Father. We just thank you for giving us the opportunity to live and do your will, my Heavenly Father. Even though we may stray, you keep providing for us, and we thank you for that. I just thank you for everyone in this circle, my Heavenly Father. You know what each and every one of us are in need of, my Heavenly Father, what we're going through in our daily life, my Heavenly Father. Give us just courage, my Heavenly Father. Give us wisdom, my Heavenly Father, to go the way that you want us to go, my Heavenly Father. Remove any anxieties or any worries that we may be going through, my Heavenly Father. Whatever's nagging on us in the back of our minds, my Heavenly Father, we're just laying it right down at your feet, my Heavenly Father. We just praise you right now for all that you've done, all that you're going to do in your darling son's name. Amen. 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 Father God, we ask you to allow your Holy Spirit to fall fresh on us this afternoon. Yes. We ask you, Father, for your many blessings today. We ask you to come into our hearts and our minds, prepare us for your will, our joy, Father. Yes. We ask you to just give us strength today. Uh, thank you for our peace. Thank you for our hope and our right mind, Father God. Thank you for our strength and our bodies. Yes. We thank you, Father, for just being our, lead, our leader, Father. Thank you for being the king on the throne. Yes. We thank you, Father, for just your grace and mercy, Lord. We thank you for just allowing us to have breath in our bodies. In order for us to just stand here today, Father, we thank you for our health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your son Jesus, for the blood that he shed on Calvary for us, Lord. We thank you for Bethany, our church family, Father yes. God. Yes. We thank you for our pastor and our yes. minister of music. We thank you just as the congregation comes Sunday. We just thank you for allowing us to gather and worship in your name, Lord. Yes. We ask you, Father, to bless the men Sunday. Bless the young men Sunday, Father, as they sang their songs of Zion. We ask you, Father, to just bless Bethany in a special way, Father God. You know what each and every last one of us need, Father. We ask you to touch us in a special way. Father God, we ask you to come into our hearts and our minds. Allow us to see your will, Father. Help us to walk that line, Father God. We know that it's hard daily. It's hard daily, but we know with you, anything is possible. We ask you to help strengthen our minds, strengthen our hearts and our love for one another, Father God. We ask you, Father, to use us as your vessel, as we spread your word, your word and your message, Father God. We ask you to help us stay in tune to hear you, Father. Help us to be more tuned into your word, Father God. Help us to renew our strength, Lord, daily, weekly, 
every hour, Father. We need you, Lord, and we just thank you, Father. We ask you to bless the kids this week, Father. We know that summer is here, Father God, and we just want to keep them active and keep them registered with you, Lord. We ask you for that special protection. We ask you to cover the sick and shut in, Lord. We know that some that want to be here and they can't, Father God, we just ask you to just use one of us, Father God, use someone to just spread that word, spread that message, and help just uplift their spirits, Lord. We ask you to cover that me tonight, the word that will be brought by Pastor Haynes, Father God. We just ask you to allow us to receive it, allow us to dissect it and use it in our daily lives. We ask you for strength as we study your word tonight. We ask for understanding also, Father God. We ask these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Sister Yes, sir. Atlanta? No, Atlanta. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to So I was there for a My wife, my brother lives on that one. Maybe one day I'll get there. <laughs> you said you were grandkids? Yeah. How many grandkids you got? I have all together. Four grandkids. How many say all together? Three boys and a girl. <laughs> Raising left. Well, I do the honor. No, it might be some on the bottom. Yeah, I just got that legend. I love the G. Pastor took out the snicker dude. <laughs> How's everybody doing? All right. All right. All right. So I had a good June tea. Yes. yes. She gonna go by there and tell him, tell him about it, tell him about it. Got them treats. <laughs> 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 we got them tip treats. They make tip cookies. <laughs> you got chocolate chips. God bless these himself. <laughs> there he is. Now she got that oatmeal raisin. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's the last one. I missed that one. Anybody got a question from last week? Question from last week? We were talking about the power test last week. Today we're going to talk about the pardon test. Pardon test. I was really shocked yesterday when I received news that Pastor Robert Morris yeah, I saw that. <laughs> resigned his position. See if I can get him to preach for us. <laughs> I might be able to get him now and he ought to be cheap. There's, there's controversy going on. But uh, I do want to pray for him, pray for his church. Then they got to, need to pray for Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. Pastor Evans, and then I found out that T.D. Jakes got some stuff going on. It's great for him and his family. So. Y'all been busy. Yes. Mm -hmm. This thing about pardon. Three words, three words. I'm not going to be able to cover them all, but we. Which please have in mind. Release, receive, and believe. Keys to forgiveness. Release, receive, and believe. Most people have a 
problem for giving others hmm. because they can't release what was done against them. Hmm. Most people can't forgive others because they really don't receive God forgiving them. One reason they can't believe God forgave them, and they, one reason they don't receive forgiveness because they don't believe God forgave them. That's in the nutshell. Let's start off with this thing about uh, Genesis chapter 39. Let's read verse 2 and 3. Genesis 39, 2 and 3. <clears throat> the Lord was with Joseph. And he prospered, and he lived in the house of his, his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. Okay. Let's look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Memorize that one. That's one we got to commit to memory. Well, we'll get it first. Read the first. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 5, verse 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Read it again. God made him who had no sin. God made him. Who was to him who had no sin? Jesus. Jesus. God made Jesus who had no sin. To be sin. To become sin. For us. Because of our sin. Mm -hmm. That we might be made what? That we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God. So that what he says. God sees us, he sees righteousness. When God sees us, he sees righteousness. Nobody goes to hell because of sin. <coughs> Nobody goes to hell because of sin. People who go to hell go because of unbelief. Uh, nobody goes to hell because of sin. People go to hell because of unbelief. Why can't they go to hell because of sin, Chastity? Because Jesus has already he dealt he with the sin the problem. Yes. He already paid the price for our sin. He paid the price for our sins. So sin is not an issue. Do you think Joseph knew whether or not his brother sold him into slavery? No, baby. He he thought they, they did. Him. They didn't, but he thought they did. How you know that? I know what. He thought they did. I read that somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's possible, very likely, that he would think they are the ones who sold him into slavery. He did say what y'all did. Y'all meant to be evil, so he knew they did something. 
Because they're the ones put him in the pit. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing they know. Now the Midianites are Israelites of God, which took, pulled him out of the pit. But he don't know whether they sent him or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is my question. When did he forgive them? I think he gave them a long time ago. Hmm. When did he forgive? Read that again, please, that you read. The Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success, in everything he did. Morris suggests, and I think he had some, some credence that Joseph had already forgiven them. Mm -hmm. As soon as he left, he's in Potiphar's house. Why do you say that? Because the Bible says God was with him. him. Mm -hmm. He can move on. Mm -hmm. hey, you don't, you don't, he no issues. You don't see nowhere in that way he's holding the grudge against his Brothers, you don't see where he got a problem with what they did against him. Mm -hmm. He's dealing with God, and God's dealing with him. Mm -hmm. God is with him. And therein lies the problem. Most people have difficulty in forgiving who have wronged them because of the wrong that was done to them. Mm. 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 Y'all follow my logic? Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't want to forgive them. You don't know what they did to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how nasty they were to me. But God in essence says that we don't have a choice. We are responsible to forgive. It didn't matter what they did to you. Doesn't matter how wrong they are. We are responsible to forgive mm -hmm. that which is done against us. Why is that? Because God forgives us. Because God forgave you. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Why are you looking at me like that, Chest? Chest didn't think I'm a fool. I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matthew right chapter there. 6, what? Verse, verse 12. 12. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. I'm not there yet. Oh, she's going to change tonight. She's going to be there tonight or she's going to hell. Did I say that, Clint? I said that out loud. I said that out loud. Oh, wow. I am not. I refuse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Read that to me. And forgive us our debts as we also forgive forgiven our debtors. Click, let me see that out of your Bible. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Okay, he still used that debtors. <laughs> forgive us our sins. Okay. As we have forgiven those who have sinned against, who us. Have sinned against okay. us. Yeah. What's verse 13 say? And we do not I ain't calling no names. Look at me. I'm telling you no. what. 
I'm telling you what the Bible says. We're going over the Bible. Says. Jesus says when you pray, this is your prayer. This is your pattern. Lord, I want you for, to forgive me the same way I forgive people who have done things against me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, question, question, wait, wait, question. So, if moving on and not saying nothing is that forgiving somebody? Moving on, not saying nothing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like if something, like instead of instead of them coming to you like I'm sorry for what I did, instead of you waiting for that apology and you just move on and not mentioning anything else of it, and completely like, would you be able this to see that person in the future? Huh? Would you be able to deal with them in the future and talk to them? Yeah. Do you forget? You can forgive, but you don't forget. Yeah. So I mean, I don't. But there's I don't nowhere have to... in scripture you see where God says <laughs> you're supposed to forget. You have to forgive and forget. Yeah. Yeah. You forgive, but you ain't got to forget. But to forgiving forget. is a choice. Yeah. God, you don't see when God forgets. God knows everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. So God can forgive you. But he doesn't forget what you did. <laughs> right. But he makes a charge to forgive and to separate your sin as far from him as the east is from the west. That's not on a round thing. That's a slap. Mm -hmm. And lead us not into what? Temptation. Now he done made a he done made a connection. Between my ability to forgive and my being tempted. What does it say? Read 13 again. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Read yours, Clay. 13. Verse 13. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Yeah, that's what I want. Deliver <laughs> us not into temptation, mm -hmm. but deliver us from the evil one. Mm -hmm. There's a relationship between my ability to forgive mm -hmm. and my ability to be tempted mm -hmm. by. The evil one. The evil one. Okay. Because if I'm not forgiving, mm -hmm. it's because I'm not listening to who? God. God. Because yeah. if I'm listening to God, God says, forgive. So I have to verbally forgive the person. I can't just move on without saying anything. You're trying to make a distinction between how you treat me. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that, say for instance, me and Dewan, right? Mm -hmm. Which never happened, but say for instance, Boy, that last week. <laughs> no, <laughs> I heard about it. No. <laughs> she said it. Did she say it? <laughs> she didn't want you to know, but that happened last week. <laughs> <laughs> but me and Dewan, right? We have a disagreement. I do something to her. But instead of me coming to her and say, hey, I'm sorry for what I did, I just don't say anything. And she doesn't say anything. But we're still cordial. But we never mention. Forgiving has nothing to do with, with whether the person apologizes or not. Okay. That's what I want to know. That's what I was asking. Forgiving has nothing to do whether you interact with the person who did it. Just as long as you forgive them. You've yes. got to forgive no heart. matter what. Okay. There's no if, ands, or maybes. Okay. You have one recourse to forgive. Y'all feel me? Yes. Anybody got a problem so far? Okay. Joseph is aware of what his brothers have done, but he don't have time to deal with that. 
Why is that? Because he's dealing with God. The Lord is with him. He's not focusing on what they did to him. He's focusing on, focusing on his relationship to God. I leave this today. See, it says dream to destiny. Mm -hmm. I was trying to make it dreams to destiny, but it doesn't say dreams. It says dream. In other words, when God gives you your destiny, he gives you your dream. Your dream gets you to your destiny. You get to your destiny listening to God. So that if I'm going to listen to God, I can't be sidetracked by all the negativity. Because if you have a tendency not wanting to forgive, who do you think trying to encourage you to do that? Oh, the evil one. The devil, you know. A lot of them. You can't not want to forgive unless you listen to the devil. You got it. Mars, he talks about uh, when they were first married, they were in a little small house. And, uh, one of the houses that had a little small bathroom. Bathroom, one of those small bathrooms where you can sit on the toilet and wash your hands in the basin at the same time. <laughs> That's for y'all time. Y'all know about them things. <laughs> Chester, you got one right now, Chester. <laughs> Chester, like, one this weekend. <laughs> he said that uh, one Sunday he was getting ready for church. Of course, you know, men always we kind of get ahead of the woman. So he says, wife, was living behind him. She was putting on her makeup. She got everything basically in place. But uh, she don't have on the church shoes yet. She got on slippers. And uh, she had put on her dress. She still got on her robe. He's fully dressed. He's got his leather shoes on, suit, everything. So he goes in the bathroom trying to reach around his wife to want to brush his teeth. He wants to put some water on. As he reached around her, trying to get the toothbrush with him, he accidentally stepped on her toe, mm -hmm. her foot, mm -hmm. with all of his weight. Mm -hmm. The pain was so traumatizing that initially she couldn't even scream. She just like, <laughs> and so by the time she come out with the scream, he could tell by the sound that she was in a lot of pain. So he said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And when he tells her, I'm sorry, she said, oh, that's all right. He said, but she was saying that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> what he know? But he could tell by those screams <laughs> she was suffering. Uh -huh. She walked and he kept saying, Oh, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. He said, I understand you didn't do it intentionally. Why you keep saying you're sorry? He said, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. And she said, I'm all right. I'm all no problem with it. She's saying she all right. Uh -huh. But he feel like something else is wrong. He finally said, uh, I tell you what, hit me. Just hit me in the face. Lord, harder you can't hit me. <laughs> Say what? He wants her to hit him so he could feel some pain. Mm -hmm. And he thinks his feeling pain will relieve his guilt for inflicting pain. Y'all mm -hmm. y'all missed it, y'all mm -hmm. missed it. It's like penance. See, that's the way people always sin. 
they have difficulty receiving sin because they feel like they need to do something. If I don't do something, I feel like God hasn't forgiven me yet. I forgot to have my devotion, so I got a ticket on the way to work. Always, oh, see, God was punishing me because I didn't do my devotion. He feel better because he thanked God got it back. <laughs> God don't do stuff like that. God ain't going to try to get back at you for something you didn't do. He ain't about trying to punish you because you messed up. He got other ways of dealing with you other than knocking you upside your head. But you feel better when you think God did something because you want God to do something so you can receive the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel me? Anybody mm -hmm. got a problem with that? Mm -hmm. You see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people are forgiven, but they can't receive the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. They have difficulty receiving it. Their guilt won't let them receive it. People be like that. And it might be just he's trying to put you through a process. God doesn't spend a lot of time punishing people. He spends more time trying to love you. When you think about God, instead of thinking about God with a big stick, when you think about God, there are three characteristics you ought to think about. Love, grace, and mercy. Mm -hmm. Love, grace, and mercy. Love, grace, and mercy. And mercy. By what are you saying? Or by what are you saying? Y'all know what? Y'all ain't never heard that verse? Or by blank are you saying? All right. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 8. For it is by grace. You have it is been, by what? By grace. Mm -hmm. You have been saved through faith. It is by what? Grace. grace. Mm -hmm. So why you didn't know that? I knew it. I didn't know it. I, I could. You could. There's some things you ought to know. There's something. It ain't got nothing to do with no trick question or nothing. There's something y'all know. <laughs> what am I saying? If you're not saved by faith, you're saved by grace. Through faith. What saves you? Grace. God's grace is what saves you. Why do I need to know that? See, your salvation ain't really got a whole lot to do with you. <laughs> What is grace? God, God's unmerited favor. Two verse eight. God's undeserved favor. God's unmerited favor. In other words, my salvation I don't really have a whole lot to do with me. It has to do with God know about that? What that kind of, well, you just got to read that. He says, because God took our sin and placed it on his son. For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son yeah, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life y'all feel mm -hmm. y'all see where I'm coming from mm -hmm. so then when I think about God I think about God as grace mercy and love when they, where you see strap in it? Where's the stick? Mm -hmm. See, the, the devil got you messed up into thinking God is not on your side. When the truth of the matter is, God is the one on your side. Mm -hmm. When God sees you, he sees what? Righteous. righteousness. righteousness. When God sees you, he sees righteousness. So that when you look in the mirror and you don't see righteousness, that's because you're looking at yourself through the devil's eyes, mm -hmm. not through God's eyes. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, sir. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. If I see righteousness, I don't have no problem receiving forgiveness. Huh? I can receive it because I believe a loving God gave it to me. Let me tell you something else. It is impossible for you to forgive if you are not able to receive forgiveness from God. Hmm. The only way I can forgive unmerited, undeserved forgiveness is I got to receive unmerited. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our... See, when you start trying to fuss with God mm -hmm. about not forgiving the woman because of what she did to me, what you really fuss me, God, about is <laughs> don't forgive me because of what I did to you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes. But there's no justification. All sin is against who? God. God. So when you sin, you sin against God. But then God forgave you your sin. So if God forgave you your sin, you got to receive the forgiveness. Do you receive it because you deserve it? No. You receive it because you're worthy of it? No. You receive it because you did your penance? No. I received it because I trust God who gave it. Any questions so far? So I don't care what wrong they did me. I don't care what wrong they did you. That's not even an issue. You still got to forgive. Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 through 21. Genesis 50, 15 through 31. When Joseph's brother saw her father was dead, they said, What is Joseph holding grudge against us? and paid us back for all the wrong we did to him. So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. <laughs> this is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God. Forgive the, the sins of who? The 
the sins of the spirit of the God of your father. Don't forget the sin of your brothers. Forgive the sins of your the servants of God. Mm -hmm. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but thy intended is for good to accomplish what is now being done. The saving of many lives. Read verse 21 in yours, Clint. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly. To them. Read verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. You read King James? Read 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. You meant it for evil. Mm. Question. Do you think Joseph really told them what they said he told them? Mm -hmm. What's the question again? Say that again. You Did Joseph that? really tell them to tell I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Did Jacob really tell them to tell Joseph? I don't think they made up. They can't for, they haven't forgiven themselves. Oh, you know. They still holding on to that. They were Yeah, he, there's no indication that Jacob even knew what they had done. <laughs> they never told Jacob. They, they never confessed that wrong. And there's nothing in that whole statement that suggests they are apologizing and asking for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to be forgiven, but they haven't admitted they've done wrong. He says, you meant it for evil. But mm -hmm. well, they tell, you know, our father said, you know, don't, <laughs> don't hold it against <laughs> the servants of God. Don't even say us. Uh, <laughs> the evil one, these servants of God, we, these men of God, don't even know, don't, don't hold that against us. They are manipulating, they lie. <laughs> They're trying to cover their own tracks. They're messing up. But Joseph on the other hand said, look, man, you ain't got to go through all that. I know what y'all did. Y'all meant it for evil. You were trying to, but see, I'm not dealing with you according to what you meant and what you did. No. I'm dealing with God. But God yeah. meant it for good. Mm -hmm. Y'all feel? Mm -hmm. Evil. God. Yeah. No problem. Yes, sir. So that Joseph is working on a higher ground because he has forgiven them. Not because what they did wasn't that bad. <laughs> Not because what they did didn't hurt them. Not because they were trying to bless him. No, no. He forgave them because his relationship with God demanded mm -hmm. he forgive them. So, so verse, verse 19 when he says, don't be afraid, I am in the place of God. Is that him saying that I'm in the, in the right relationship with God? Or is, what is that saying? He's saying, read Joseph Clinton, verse 21. 21. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. What's your say? 21. Now therefore fear you not, 
I will nourish you and your little ones, and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. That's the part that said was not, I'm not. 19. 19. 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? Yeah. Who can forgive sin? God. God. Only one. Mm -hmm. There's only one who's just. Mm -hmm. That's God. Nobody else is in such a good shape as you can forgive sin. Because you got sin yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not be, I can't put myself in the place of God. Only God can indict you. Okay. I ain't going to do that. Just the problem. That's the problem. You have difficulty forget, forgiving what they did to you. You're in essence saying you're better than them. Because you want God to forgive you for what you do. But you ain't going to forgive them because you better than them. I wouldn't treat nobody like that. You'd be lying, but you won't tell yourself that. You still ain't there yet. <laughs> You're working on it. I'm going to pray for you. I haven't worked out. I haven't worked out for myself a president. <laughs> to forgive others completely is to release them in your heart from all charges against them. Even though what they have done is wrong, they are acquitted. They are no longer held guilty for the things they have done. True forgiveness does not continue to look for justice of vindication. True forgiveness releases the wrongdoers from the punishment they deserve. Release, release. Remember, this is the way God forgives us. Every one of us has sinned against God and deserves eternal separation from him as a result. But God placed our sins on Jesus and Jesus took the punishment for our sins. God in turn released us from the punishment we deserve. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Any questions? Any questions? talking about Jacob, they didn't say Jacob asked him. Jacob commanded him. They wanted to make sure they dotted every I and crossed every T. First John chapter 1 verse 9. Read that for somebody. Leviticus 19, 18. Against anyone among your people, 
but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Thank you, G. The King James says, Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. Chastity, God says, Vengeance is mine. Not yours. Let's deal with receive before I let you go. The Bible makes it very clear that there is a connection between our forgiveness of others and God's forgiveness of us. I'm sure most of you have prayed the Lord's Prayer. And I already, we already did that, so y'all know what that's all about. When you pray this prayer, do not realize, do you realize you're asking God to forgive you in the same way you forgive other people? I'm sure you're thinking this would have been helpful information to have known before you start telling me to pray like that. In the verses immediately following the Lord's Prayer, Jesus explains, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Verses 14 through 15 of chapter 6. This is an amazing scriptural passage, but I have to admit I sometimes wish it wasn't in the Bible. I have difficulty forgiving others if I can't receive forgiveness myself. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Freely you have received, freely give. Do you realize the word forgive contains the word give? The only way you can freely give something is if you have freely received it. I have a hard time believing God forgave me if I have not received the forgiveness. If I can come to grips with the fact that God forgave me, and then I have no problem forgiving others. The freedom of being forgiven is what, what allows me to have the freedom to forgive. Y'all feel me? Perhaps you have a hard time believing God could forgive you completely and totally release you from the penalty of sin. After all, the Bible tells us God is holy and pure. It says he is so pure that he cannot even look upon evil. Rebecca chapter 1 13 says, you are of purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. God cannot even look at wickedness and sin. This is how pure his eyes are. Yet, every one of us have messed up and missed the mark. Hmm. Isaiah 53, 6 says, all we like sheep have gone astray and we turn everyone from his own way. All of us has gone astray. All of us have transgressed God's commands. All of us have sin and done things God could not even put his eyes upon. Job says he does not withdraw his eyes from the righteous. And 1 Peter 3 says for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. How you gonna deal with that? 
You don't see your sin. He sees righteous. Questions, comments. Y'all get anything out of that? Yeah. Party. What'd you say, Chester? You ain't got you ain't there yet? I heard you. Let him flip. <laughs> Don't take my word, just keep reading with the Bible. <laughs> I sure will. <laughs> we're just gonna every day to understand it. So what? Uh uh. I said, I'm going to read that scripture every day until I understand it fully. Yeah, keep doing that. Just, just listen to the right voice. Stop listening to the devil. Start listening to God. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. <laughs> Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. The evil one is trying to mess you up. The evil one is trying to tempt you. Trying to tempt you to feel about others the way the devil feels about us. Trying to get you to do the devil's way instead of God's way. My ability to forgive wrongs against me is my ability to forgive my wrongs against God. Y'all feel me? Questions, comments, we ain't got but one more. We're going to be the purpose test. Purpose test. <laughs> Questions, comments, sick report. Okay, you know me been back in the hospital, right? I know now. They announced it this morning, Sister Ann Bennett told us, because she said, you might not ever come to church again. We don't know where you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Anywho, I got a message from the land that says she's still having to have a discharge date. Now. Yeah, they say she's supposed to go, and they say she's going to be today, but evidently she's not out yet. But she's supposed to be right over there at Trayvon this week, so. I'll wait till she get over there. But she didn't talk about you like that. That was me. <laughs> she said, she said I know she did. I'm the, I'm the one said that. Yeah. Ain't no telling she coming there. She wasn't here last week, was she? Who? You! <laughs> she wasn't here last week. Because I was asking about Sister Benny last week. We ain't had nobody to tell us about Sister Benny last week. Because you weren't here. That's why I was talking about you. Uh, anybody heard from Brother Evans? She was at home last week. <laughs> He's home? She, no, she was at the house last week. We all were Sister Benny. We <laughs> <laughs> Sunday is our men's day. Sunday is our men's day. Yeah. Reverend Larry Sanders is going to be our guest speaker. Say so he's going to bring some men ushers with him. So. Mm -hmm. We're looking for a great time for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Questions, comments? Well, we can stand down and close the prayer then. What time is it, y'all? I got 8.05. I did. I bet y'all out early. Out of early. And for you latecomers, there are cookies There's back no there. more? Oh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. There are some tip treats. Cookie treats.
You ain't all the cooking. <laughs> My leads and I close in prayer. Father God, we just bless your name. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. Lord, we thank you for your word, the challenge of your word. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy being such a gracious God, such a good God. Lord, we thank you for the righteousness that you put on us through your son. We thank you for the forgiveness that you used to liberate us. We thank you, Lord, for walking with us and talking with us. And yes, yes, yes. Being our guide. And so, Lord, we Ask it that you would touch all of our hearts. Yes. Help us to hear God's thoughts, to think the way you think, and to love the way you love. Yeah. Yeah. Help us, Lord, to tune in to you and to hear clearly your directives for our lives. Help us, Lord, to not only receive your forgiveness, but help us to continually be able to forgive others. Yes. Mm -hmm. As you wipe out our wrongs, help us to wipe out the wrongs of those who have worked against us. Help us not be like that servant you talked about who was forgiven but dead and he went out ready to beat somebody who owed him. But help us, Lord, to constantly remember that if it wasn't for your grace, None of us would be justified. Yes. So let us be walking manifestations of your love, your mercy, and your peace, your word, your will, and your way is our prayer. We lift up Bethany in a special way and ask that you would bless us with the blessings you see and know that we need of. Yes. We pray not only for Bethany, but saints everywhere. We're getting so many negative reports. We see how the devil is so busy in so many other congregations. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we pray that thou would just be that steadying force. Yes. Bless those pastors who are going through a storm right now. Give them the stability and the love and the forgiveness they need. Yeah. Yeah. Bless those churches who are experiencing the difficulties. Yes, yes. Allow your spirit to dominate them yes. and to continue to unite them in your name. Yes. Help us, Lord, to do nothing that will hinder or harm your will, but everything we do with that of striving to help them to unite and get closer to you and to your spirit and your guidance and direction. Yes. We pray that you would bless every home represented here tonight and that we'll leave here and find our homes the way we left them. Again, we plead that your grace would rest, rule, and abide with each and every heart. These and many, many other blessings we ask in the magnificent name of your darling son, Jesus the Christ our Lord and Savior. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Amen.